Okay, so before I uh, pop the engine upside down, I'm going to have to remove all the upper crankcase bolts. So there's going to be a few of those. Uh, normally you would have an alternator here, so you would remove the alternator's cover. And there's a bolt inside here. So that's where it is. It's that bolt there. So you need an Allen key for that. Alright, so that one loosens up easy. That's the bolt removed. But now I'm going to go for those two bud boys here. Easy. Alright, so once again it was that one here and those two here. So I'm just gonna get them out completely. And that's it. Now I'm going to go for those two here. That is it. Yeah, so I don't have any other bolts that would be holding the upper crankcase to the bottom crankcase from the top. Okay, let's go back to this um, clutch housing. There's a few things here to remove. I'm going to have to remove that retaining plate in here, which is held by two screws, one here, one here. The bottom screw, however, is covered by this gear. To remove that gear, you've got to remove this circlet there, and then the gear pops off. So circuit pliers. And off we go. Circuit comes off. Okay. Right, so the gear comes off. As you can see it's got a recess there for the pin. And that pin is right up there. You see this pin here? I'll just grab the magnet here. And here we have the pin retrieved. Okay, let's hammer it. There we go. So as you can see, so the upper one now moves. Excellent, now the same has to happen with the bottom one. There we go. So the bottom one is released too. Moves easily. Put that one here. There we go, that moves as well. Okay, now finally there's going to be one more 10mm nut just here. Excellent. So I'll remove this plate now, which will then allow me splitting cases easily. What I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to keep those bolts in there. 
because I just don't want to lose them. Here I've got something interesting for you. So those are the old cylinders. Look at this corrosion on the board, man. This is why I struggled with removing those cylinders because they were literally rust welded. Look at that. That's literally how destroyed those cylinders were and every single bore is the same. Corrosion, scratches, destroyed literally, look at this. So, this is junk, but what I'm going to do anyway, um, I'm going to be inverting this engine and because the con rods and this uh, slide are still sticking out massively and I don't have a proper stand that would allow me just hanging this engine upside down, I'm going to put the, the, the old base gasket on, the cylinders, the junk cylinders on and the head on and I'm going to bolt it by let's say six bolts loosely, somewhat loosely, so I can then turn it around and rest it on the valve cover so um, then it will allow me messing around with the pan and uh, you know splitting the cases. Alright then so let's get those cylinders on. Yeah that will do as long as they kind of sit on it that's okay. Right so now I'm going to just stuff the old base gasket on it. Alright, so now I'm going to put the empty head on, literally there's no valves, nothing. Alright, and I'm just going to use literally a few head bolts, let's say those four in the corners to just hold it snug to the block and then I'm going to be able to invert the engine Alright peeps, so I've got the cylinders on, I've got the head on secured by those four uh, head bolts they're just snug, you know, there's nothing in there, there's no valve, no piston, there's nothing I'm going to have to put two um, uh, cam holders on as well and that is because uh, the, the cover uh, the valve cover actually secures to the cam holders so I need um, so I need those in. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the valve cover on. All right, then I'm gonna secure it by just a few of those bolts. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, the engine, engine is upside down and I can um, work on it fairly easily now and I hope it now makes sense why I put this head and cylinders back on. I've got some soft padding underneath so I'm not ragging the paint too much uh, and it's actually somewhat stable as well. So I guess now I could just crack on with it. Okay so I'm going to start with removing off the oil filter. That comes off and then I'm going to remove the oil cooler. Alright so now you remove this union bolt here uh, which I loosened using my uh, impact gun, but that's not a problem whatsoever, you can use a breaker bar, it's not actually that tight there. So, just unscrew this. And here we have it, oil cooler comes off. I'm going to start removing the sump bolts, those are 8mm bolts. It's a tap tap. And your oil pan comes off. Now we'll have a look what I found inside my oil pan. Let's get this out of the way. And that's a 10 millimeter bolt here. That comes off really easily. There's one more bolt here. Alright, that's it. So, um, crankcase bolts. <clears throat> 
those here at the top, I don't think there's a sequence that you have to follow with those. There's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine of them. And those are uh, 10 millimeter bolts and those are small. And I think you can just get them off as you like. Whereas the bigger ones here, there is a sequence for those. So let's go ahead with those first. Alright, so I'm going to remove all of those now. And in a minute we're going to be doing the main bolts, holding the cases together. And of course, people, typical occurrence, I have missed one bolt, which is that one here. So, peeps, all of those smaller ones, 10mm bolts, are removed. And now is the main crankcase bolts, <clears throat> which you need to remove in a sequence. So let's go ahead and do it. Bolt number one, which is this one here. Then bolt number two is this one here. Just stick a, an Allen bit there, solidly. Just use the rattle gun. And let's see how will this work. So that one's out. And I'll just keep it there, like that. Okay, so is this one three? We're going diagonally from that one, basically there. And bolt number four. Yes, you've guessed it. This bastard here. There we go. Bolt number five is that one here. Number six is the one here. Bolt number eight, it's that one here. Right, bolt number nine is this here. And uh, bolt number ten is that one here. Eleven is this one here. Alright, and 12 is that one here, of course. And now, obviously just getting all of them out. And now we don't have to worry about any sequence because they're all loose. So it's literally just getting them out. A few moments later. Okay, peeps, so all of them are off. And look at this. All of them are put in this board so I know exactly which bolt goes where because they are not the same length. All right, here we have just one more bolt here. That's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt. Can you see this? I'll try to magnify it. See this, it's just, it's just there. So I'm gonna get this off. All right, here we have it. So, let's start tapping. You can see how it's separating here? See this gap? How it's opening up? Okay, now I'm gonna try here. There we go, it's opening up nicely actually. Let's move back in here. Okay. There we go, I've got it. So let's have a closer look at the crankshaft because that was my biggest worry, but look at this. Spot on. This is a good and healthy crank. Really happy with that. So who knows, maybe, maybe there is a chance for this engine. 